Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us again today, looking at some, at some objects with the Wesley connection. Today we're looking at a very famous object, a teapot. Now, the story goes that this teapot was given by Josiah Wedgwood to John Wesley in 1761. Well, let's have a look at it. It's made from ceramic, and the first thing you can see straight away is its massive size. It's much bigger than any usual teapot. In fact, it is meant to hold four gallons, about four liters, which, looking at it, is probably about right. It's made from white glazed ceramic, which is a little bit crazed by now. Well, it's actually crazed all over. If we have a close up, we can see that. And you can also see that its condition is no longer the best. It's sadly lost its spout and we have no lid anymore. It's decorated in underglazed blue decoration, transfer printed, so it's not hand painted, they were transferred, that were put onto the ceramic and then fired over and glazed, which was a cheaper method of decorating ceramics. Um, in fact, it is still done all over and all the time because it is so much cheaper than hand painting ceramics. And the pattern um, is interesting, you've got lots of different motifs, including floral sort of uh, shamrocks, roses, um, there's a thistle here as well at the front. These are meant to be emblems of the English, Scottish and Irish nations. And very nicely done here, sort of two vignettes, plus something more abstract at the top and also at the bottom. Uh, these in fact are meant to be decorations taken from Josiah Wedgwood's intended wife um, from the early 1760s. Apparently they formed part of a dress pattern at the time. Whether this is really the case, we don't know and can't verify now. But it is certainly very interesting. Um, and if we have a look at these vignettes, you can see that there are two prayers as well. If I read them to you, be present at our table, Lord, be here and everywhere adored. These creatures bless and grant that we may feast in paradise with thee. And the other one. We thank thee, Lord, for this our food, but more because of Jesus' blood, that manna to our souls be given, the bread of life sent down from heaven. So these were meant to be table prayers. One to be said before and one after the meal. Apparently these were composed by John Chenick, one of uh, John Wesley's early Methodist itinerant preachers, who was also the headmaster of Kingswood School near Bristol, a school that Wesley had set up um, in the mid-18th century. So, nice to have this on here. Um, well, was this Wesley's teapot or wasn't it? We aren't sure, but the likelihood is that it probably wasn't Wesley's teapot. A, um, we have had experts at the chapel in the past who looked at the teapot and couldn't verify that it was a Wedgwood product. Indeed, when you look underneath, you cannot actually find any stamp or any other indication of authenticity. Um, the quality, perhaps, is not what I might have expected from Wedgwood in the 18th century overall. Um, yeah. But also, Wesley wasn't exactly known as a tea drinker. In fact, in the 1740s, he wrote a tract advising against tea drinking. Um, and it is probably not very likely that he would have revised his opinion later on. Although, of course, this would have been made about 20 years later. Um, the exception might be if it was used for drinking sage tea, but we don't know. Certainly it was big enough for a group of people to drink tea, not just one person. Um, and it is certainly unusual. And if I now show you something in comparison, we sell a replica teapot in our shop with the same decoration. And there you can see the size comparison. This is probably about for one litre and this for four. 